What is going on everyone? It's Super here and welcome to another Injustice 2 video and this is the final Q&A video of 2017 moving forward to 2018 which is uh, going to be a really really exciting first month because we have Enchantress, we have I think Street Fighter Arcade Edition and we have the biggest of them all Dragon Ball Fighters coming out January 26th which I am going to go absolutely hard on probably even more than I did for Injustice 2 so I can't wait man but today we have a Q&A video got a ton of questions from the last one so if you guys have your own question that I don't answer in this video leave it down in the comments but keep in mind it might get answered like later down the road because I have a, a good amount of questions from previous videos uh, before I start anything, just want to, I, I don't usually, I don't know why, but I don't usually like promote my social media accounts, which I really should, because I'm always on Twitter, uh, not always on Instagram, but I do post a lot of uh, princess cookie pictures, stuff like that, um, so I'll leave those linked in the description, Twitter is probably the best way to like actually get me to respond to like a, a, one of your questions, or you know, just talk to me in general, because I upload so many videos that I get so many like different notifications for like comments I can like reply to them all so Twitter is definitely the best you know to communicate with me and also Instagram is you you get princess and cookie pictures so what more can you want from from that all right let's start off with this first bit of news that happened uh, a couple days ago actually um, Enchantress the first like our first look at how Enchantress is going to look in Injustice 2, like actually in game, not with the, you know, like cinematic effects or like the cinematic cutscene that we saw in the Fighter Pack 3 trailer, we actually get to see a screenshot of her. There's a video about it, I didn't want to download it because it's just her like moving back and forth, but you can get the gist of it from this screenshot right here. Pretty much our first look at Enchantress and how she's going to look, and man, I gotta say, she looks great. She looks really good. Uh, I knew that she was going to look good, but man, I, I, she's exceeded my expectations. And even more so now, I can't wait to play her. Uh, also been getting questions on when do I think the Enchantress trailer will be out? Well, Tyler Lansdowne had said that after the holidays, uh, there should be some more information on Enchantress. And if she comes out on January 9th, which I'm assuming she will because it's the second Tuesday of the month, we should be getting a trailer for her uh, probably next Wednesday. I don't know when. Let's see. Monday is the first, second. So like January 3rd, we should be getting a trailer for her. And then on Friday, maybe we get like the Watchtower. That's if they maintain the schedule of, you know, every second Tuesday of the month, they release the new DLC character, which I'm assuming that they will because she's in the game already. Like Enchantress is playable in the game. She's just locked via you know this next patch like once she's available she'll become unlocked but she's in the game already so she's already completed so i'm assuming that we will see her uh the trailer maybe like on wednesday tuesday somewhere around there and then we'll get a watchtower for her on friday and then have her released you know monday night or tuesday whenever you guys depending on what console you play all right so i think that's about it for like the general questions one more that i i've been getting asked a lot is would I like to have the two versus two tag team back in MK11? And the answer is yes. Uh, right now, that's like the hotness, right? Like, um, you know, tag tag games like multi Dragon Ball Fighters three v three, Marvel Infinite two v two with you know a crazy versatile like tag system. Um, I don't think anything like that would ever happen for MK11 or an MK game where it's that like hostile and you have that much freedom. Just because the, the games are two totally different like mechanics and engines, uh, Marvel has always been like the, the most insane fighting game ever as far as like just the pace and uh, the versatility you could do, the offense that you, that you could have. So I don't think it's going to go in that direction, but I think if there was any new Mortal Kombat game, MK11 is the perfect one because like I said, the hotness right now is like uh, tag mechanics and fighting games. So I'll be very, very surprised if we didn't have a tag system in MK11. Like a, a tag team mode, I should say, not a tag system, because it's going to be one-on-one, -on -one, but like a tag mode, something fun like an MK9. Uh, and the reason why they took it away is pretty much Ed Boon had come out and said that 
based on their stats, the tag team mode for MK, MK9 was not popular at all, even though, like, maybe the vocal minority is the one that's, like, screaming out wanting this tag team system back. Uh, I think it's just a fun game type. Even if it's not the most popular in the world, I think they should include it in the game because it's just something, it's it's like a little fun fun thing that, that people could do locally or online. So I really hope that 2v2 tag comes back for MK11. All right, let's start off with the questions here. Hey, Quantum asks, would you prefer a dedicated block button or the way it is now for Injustice, like a hold back to block? And to be honest, for a game as offensive as MKX, I think having a block button is is uh, prevents it from being absolutely like broken because you already have like MKX is very 50/50 uh, base. A lot of characters have access to you know uh, overhead lows, and with the run button, as mobile as characters are, you know you could be in someone's face in like half a second. You know even faster with the run button. Especially characters with great run speed like Kotal Khan and uh, Tanya, some of these characters have great run speed and great like long ranging normals. Uh, so having a having the game be back to block would be, you know, absolutely crazy. And Mortal Kombat has always had you know the block button. So I think for an MK game, block button is a must just because you you it's so much faster pace and you have so much more offense. But for a game like Injustice, oh my god, having like to hold back to block and having options to, you know, create offensive setups that your opponent has to guess whether you are going to cross them over with your jump in or stay on the same side, I absolutely love that. Um, you know, for games like Street Fighter, you know, with the crossover jumps or, you know, the tricky, ambiguous um, jump ins, uh, games like Marvel Infinite where you know it's, your mix-ups are literally like you have infinite options with mix-ups uh, and if you had a block button it, it's so easy to just hold the block button and you know just hold, hold the block button and you could block both sides like i really like to have the, the freedom to be able to mix my opponent up not only with a 50 50 but also a left to right mix-up or a left to right crossover setup and it's not even it's not even like complete in Injustice because to block down, all you have to do is just hold down like the the down direction. In most fighting games, you actually have to hold down plus back. So holding down is not actually a block in most fighting games. Injustice for some reason it is. So you're not even get, getting the full mix of potential that you could possibly get with left to right setups. Uh, like, let's just say, for example, on Knockdown, Catwoman has a cat dash. Sometimes it crosses up, sometimes it doesn't. But all you have to do to block that is just hold down. So, in Injustice, we don't even get the full range of, like, mix-up potentials that you would in a game like Marvel Infinite or a game like Street Fighter. Uh, so, to me, because I like coming up with setups, stuff like that, I really like the hold back to block option. But for an MK game... I think it's best to have, uh, you know, the block button just because you already have a ton of 50-50s and, you know, I think it might be a little overkill if you don't have that block button. Plus, you've always had the block button in MK. They're not going to change that. Uh, next up here, Jamie asks, Super, do you think there is going to be a gear system in MK? I don't think so. I think uh, in MK11, we're going to go back to just having costumes uh, and I really hope that they have a uh, a strong like diversity in the range of costumes for different characters because if you guys remember for Mortal Kombat X Sub-Zero, Johnny Cage, um, Scorpion, all these characters that were like classic MK characters had you know, Liu Kang was another one uh, they had so many costumes like Scorpion had about seven if you had all his costumes and then you had characters that were like DLC characters that had potential like having a different version of the Predator or having Jason X. And those characters didn't even have one costume. So that was very disappointing. As long as all the characters get some cool costumes, I'll be happy with that. But I would love to see the gear system implemented in MK11. Uh, mostly like just the way the gear looks. If they don't go with variation system, you could add uh, Actually, no, it, it, it kind of like, I don't know, 
the abilities in Injustice are really fun, but the fact that you have to get lucky and get these abilities via, you know, uh, mother boxes and the rate at which epic abilities drop is so, so low compared to when the game started. They definitely uh, decrease the amount of epic abilities that you get. Like, I can't even remember the last time I got an epic ability in an actual, like, diamond or platinum mother box. Uh, so... I don't want abilities to come back. I just want the gear to look really cool if they do implement it. I don't want gear stats. I don't want any of that. Just, you know, have the gear look cool for all these different characters if they do bring the gear system back. But I don't think it's coming back. I think we're going to get regular costumes. Um, ben as Bass asks if you could bring back five characters from MKX to MK11, who would you bring back and why? Um, I'll give you three just because. I, I'm already deep into the video and I've only answered a couple. Um, good question though. Aaron Black, because he's Aaron Black. He's one of the coolest characters that NetherRealm has created in you know a very, very, very long time. Like an actual brand new character to the franchise that they created in a really long time. Um, I want Predator to come back. Uh, this is just hypothetical. I, he's not coming back. He's a you know he was a guest character from KX. He's not coming back. But I would want Predator back because having uh, a character that has you know traps like Hunter Predator has the pimp hand in Warrior and has the uh, you know really good lasers in Hishkuten. Uh, Predator is like the most fun character in the game. I don't care what you say. No one will convince me that a character is more fun to play than all three variations of Predator. So. He would be number two, and then the final one is Cassie Cage, because I love Cassie. I think she's, obviously she's hot, and I really like her attitude and her gameplay with the instant guns and, you know, really long-ranging normal. I, I just love Cassie. So those are the three characters that I will want to come back in MK11 from MKX. And if you want to get, like, really serious, the characters that I think would make it and take out Predator... Um, I'll definitely say Ermac. Uh, Ermac to me. Oh, actually, Triborg. Yeah, Triborg is one that I would really like to see that I do think has a chance of coming back. If not Triborg, Sector number one, uh, Cyrax number two, Smoke number three, and then Cyber Sub Zero number four. If I were to rate those in order uh, for my. If one robot makes it only. Uh, next up, Christopher Cherry asks, will you always be sticking to NetherRealm games or will you branch out to Namco, for example, Tekken 7 or Soul Calibur? Um, this is actually a really good question because a lot of like newer subscribers that just subscribed to me, you know, maybe a month ago, maybe a couple weeks ago, maybe even today, that are watching this video. Uh, based on like first impression, it looks like all I upload is Injustice and like Mortal Kombat, um, but that's definitely not the case. I have uploaded a lot of Street Fighter V when it first came out. I just lost, you know, interest in the game because the only characters that that I really liked were Nash and and Akuma, and I couldn't like play two characters only. Got bored of that, um, and I play Marvel Infinite. Uh, haven't played it as often as I wanted to, just because I've been focusing. There's been so much stuff going on for Injustice. I have uploaded like one Tekken video just when I got the game and uh, although I do love the characters in the franchise, um, Tekken 7 was, uh, you know, like 3D fighters aren't really my thing uh, and Tekken I think has a pretty good learning curve that you have to go through plus a lot of the Tekken like veterans who are moving from other Tekken games like pick up the game very easily because it's you know, uh, if you played like previous Tekken games, you're gonna have an easy time adapting to Tekken 7, even if there's different like mechanical changes to your character or to to the system. So having to catch up with those guys, plus Tekken came out at the same time as like Injustice, like two weeks after. Uh, I didn't have time to play Tekken, and now by this time I'm not really you know interested. Um, but of course, Dragon Ball Fighters is gonna be coming out. I am gonna cover Street Fighter V Arcade Edition. Um, and I'll still be covering Injustice and MK. So those are going to be the main fighting games that I focus on moving forward. Marvel Infinite, Street Fighter V Arcade Edition, um, Dragon Ball Fighters, like super a lot, like a ridiculous amount. I really want to go in with that game as much as I did MKX or Mortal Kombat, uh, MKX or Injustice. And then of course I'll be covering Injustice and then MK11 should be announced like 
maybe April, May, somewhere around there. Uh, and of course, I'll be still playing MKX here and there. So that's what I'll be covering in 2018. Um, Icarus asks, who do you think is the easiest character to reach his or her full potential and who is the hardest? I think the hardest character to reach its full potential is definitely Gorilla Grodd because he is probably the most execution heavy character in the game. Uh, he is insanely good when you are able to cancel his charge from you know a, a specific combo string like you're left really plus on block and for you guys who might not know what that is it means that you can move before your opponent can. So let's just say you're plus six on block that means you can move six frames before your opponent can move you know his first frame. So if you're able to you know cancel his his uh, his stampede on block you know you're left at a really good situation plus he does a ton of damage he has really good defense just his base defense he doesn't take as much damage as some of the other characters he has more health so if you put the time into Gorilla Grodd you'll definitely be rewarded uh, he has some pretty good buttons not the best buttons in the world um, but he does have a lot of options, especially with his traits. Um, so to get the most potential out of a character, I definitely think Gorilla Grodd is like the most technical execution heavy character in the game. And the easiest one is Supergirl, even more so than Superman. Supergirl is a ridiculously easy character to pick up. And all you have to do is mash on down one, down one breath, down one meter burn breath. There's been times where I've mashed down one like three or four times and my opponent tries to poke, counter poke me and, and they can't. So if you play Supergirl, abuse that down one. Um, she is probably the most straightforward character who is also ridiculously amazing. I don't know if Supergirl has a losing matchup in Injustice 2. So Supergirl by far is the easiest character to get her full potential. So I think that's gonna do it for today's video. Let's see, where do we live off at? Uh, oh, let's answer this last one. Aiden asks, would you have liked Aaron Black in Injustice 2? Um, no, because Aaron Black is a really heavy mix-up character with command grab and 50-50s and pressure. And Injustice 2 is incredibly zone heavy and defensive oriented. So I would not want to try to get in with Aaron Black on a character like Dr. Fate or a character like Starfire whose zoning is amazing and just be frustrated with the character. So no, I would not want Aaron Black in a game like Injustice 2. So with that last question, that's gonna be the end of today's Q&A video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. What's going on? It's Super here and thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you guys subscribe if you are not already. Also check out any of these videos linked at the top. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time.